Hey guys, we're going to do our notes over day one, Missouri's different ecosystems. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other notes that we've done because there are quite a few videos in here and the videos are really providing a lot of the instruction. So you're going to have to listen to my video, kind of watch that. And then when I tell you to pause, you really need to pause my video, play the one that's in the slide so that you really know what the details are. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over this. First of all, bell work. If you could visit any place in Missouri, where would you go and why? Go on ahead and fill that out. While you're filling it out, I'll talk about some of my favorite places. Um, I love St. Louis. Um, my dad grew up kind of outside of St. Louis. So that's the city that I went to a lot as a kid. I also really like going to Kansas City. That is where near where I went to college. So it's more the city that I explored kind of on my own. Um, I also really, really just love being out on the lake. I love being out on the rivers. I love being out on the trails. I really, I love Missouri because there is literally a touch of everything. And it's such a pretty state and there's places to go everywhere. And you're going to get a little bit of almost everything. Minus the ocean and big mountains. We don't have that. But we do have a lot of other great things to explore. So for me... I would just go to a mall. I just get in my car and go on a couple of day road trip around all of the highlights of Missouri. Our objectives, we are moving into our Missouri Ecosystems Project. This does tie directly to our ecology unit, but now we're moving into objective four, identify possible solutions to maintain an ecosystem and determine the benefits and limitations of these solutions. Today to do that, we're gonna do activity number 10, which is kind of notes over our Missouri ecosystems. And I just realized that should say a day. It's 1120, not 1119. I'll update that. Um, <clears throat> but that's what we're going to do. Ultimately, your project will involve being assigned a specific ecosystem. You will determine its overall quality of health, and then you'll come up with solutions to either maintain that health or improve that health. That is what we are getting to down the road today is to kind of build your background knowledge. So that's what the purpose of the lesson is today. So we're gonna go over Missouri's different ecosystems. Missouri's ecosystems, remember an ecosystem is a complex web of relationships between living and non-living things. We have our biotic factors, which are our living factors in the ecosystem, including plants, animals, and humans. And then our abiotic factors, which are our non-living parts, our sunlight, our air, our temperature, our soil, our minerals. <clears throat> and we really need all of those things working together. Each part of an ecosystem is connected and it depends on everything else. So if all of a sudden our abiotic factor of temperature were to drastically change, the biotic factors are going to be impacted. We've seen that this summer and fall with the drought that we've had and how that drought, how that change in our weather has really impacted all of our living things. All populations living together within a community interact and we need to maintain a, bio, a balanced ecosystem. Remember, the more biodiversity, the more different types of species that we have within an ecosystem, the healthier that ecosystem is. So we need all of those species really working together to have a really healthy ecosystem. So the first one that we're gonna talk about in Missouri is our forest ecosystems. Missouri has more than 14 million acres of forest and is ranked seventh among the United States in forest acreage. Much of our acres, much of our forest are privately owned, but the public has access to lots of state and national parks. Our biggest forest system is the Mark Twain National Forest. You have probably been in the Mark Twain National Forest. It really goes across most of Southern Missouri. So when you're there, you're really in a lot of different parts within the National Forest. It spreads over 29 counties, so a whole lot of the state. Common trees in our forest are our scarlet, scarlet oaks and our Missouri hickories. And some of our animals are opossums, black bears, coyotes, foxes, squirrels, raccoons, and various birds. Right, pause my video, go into your slides and watch this. And then after you watch, or really as you're watching the video, I want you to list at least one positive and one negative impact that humans can have on the ecosystems. The more impacts you have, the better off you're going to be whenever we get into our project in the long run. But you need to have at least one positive and one negative. 
So pause me, go back and watch the video on Missouri Forest, and then come back. All right, so if you have not already, make sure that you have those positive and negative impacts jotted down. And we're gonna move on to our swamps and our wetlands. I know most of you probably think swamps and probably think Florida, and we tend to think of swamps associated with our oceans, but will it really, we have quite a few swamps here in Missouri. Wetlands are where we have lakes or rivers that meet land and it becomes super wet land. So we're especially going to see this in the boot hill of Missouri, where the Missouri River really starts to slow down. It's where our bottom land is. It's where a lot of our rich farming is. We have cotton fields and soy fields and things like that down there because that land is really wet. And so it's able to maintain some of those crops that you're not going to see growing in other places in Missouri. When Missouri was first settled in the 19th century, we had more than 2.4 million acres of wetland. Now we only have 60,000. Read those numbers again, 2.4 million to in 2010, 60,000. So we've really cut down on our wetlands. The biggest reason that we've cut down on our wetlands is because people like to, people live near the rivers. So the Missouri River and the Mississippi River are both along some of our biggest cities, think Kansas City and St. Louis. They're along there as we go down. So we've really taken a lot of our wetland and we have turned it into land, usable land for people, not agricultural land, but it's where we put our houses and our roads and things like that. So we've lost a lot of our wetlands that way. Our habitats and our um, species, we're gonna have tree frogs, insects, snakes, beaver, waterfowl birds, those kinds of things. Go on ahead again, pause me, watch the video over wetlands as you're watching that video. Again, at least one positive and one negative impact that humans could have on our wetland ecosystem. So pause me, go watch that video, fill out that part of your handout. And now we are moving on to caves and sinkholes. Missouri actually has the second largest number of caves in the United States. We have more than 6,000. We call Missouri the cave state. Um, we kind of battle back and forth with a couple of other states for who has the most based on what's been discovered and things like that because caves and sinkholes are constantly forming. Caves are formed whenever water sinks through limestone bedrock and starts to erode underneath these layers. That's We get sinkholes on top, caves are opening surfaces. So sinkholes are more of a vertical, caves are more of a direct opening. Our Missouri caves are more are home to more than 900 land and marine animal species, such as the Ozark cavefish, the cave salamander, the dwarf American toad, and the eastern the eastern Phoebe, as, which is a bird species, as well as a variety of bats. So we have all kinds of biodiversity in there. Caves, and it's going to talk about it in the video, caves have to be really, really, really protected. So whenever you're looking at those human impacts and thinking of those positive and negatives, it does not take very much for a human to go in and really upset the delicate balance that needs to exist within a cave ecosystem. So going ahead again, pause me, watch the video over Missouri caves, fill out in your notes positive and negative impacts that we have on those things. Moving on to lakes. Missouri is home to more than a quarter million acre of public lakes. Lakes are large basins of water that are surrounded by land. And they don't, the lake itself doesn't include the river or anything that feeds or drains into the lake. So if you think in terms of the table rock, um, we have the White River and the James, things like that, that feed into Table Rock Lake. The rivers themselves are not counted as the lake. It's just once you get into Table Rock, you get into more of that stiller body of water. There's still water movement going through, but you get more into that just collective pool of water is probably a better way to say it. That's going to be the lake. Most of our lakes in Missouri are artificial. So Table Rock and Lake of the Ozarks, I know, are probably the two biggest lakes you think of when you think of a lake in Missouri. Both of those lakes were made because we dammed up rivers. And so that's how our lake systems were made. So they're artificial. Um, we have dammed them. We use those dams for electricity, and that's how our lakes are really been formed. Our lakes are home to many different species of aquatic plants. 
mollusk. Remember we talked about the zebra mussel, the mollusk are what eat those. Insects and animal life. Missouri has fish like the walleye and the bluegill and the striped bass that can also be found. As well as birds and my notes are cutting off down there at the bottom, but you can see those on yours. Again, pause me, video over lakes and ponds, jotting down at least one positive and one negative impact that humans have on those ecosystems. Next up, let's move on to our rippers. So Missouri has two really, really, really big rivers that kind of define us, the Missouri and the Mississippi. The Mississippi is our eastern border. The Missouri kind of runs. No, it's in the northern part of the state. It runs west to east, but it's kind of the northern part of the state. But of those two rivers, even though those are probably the two rivers that define Missouri, whenever you think of rivers, you probably think of smaller rivers closer to us, like the Finley and the James and the Current and Jack's Forks and things like that that you've probably been on whenever you've been floating and things like that. It's all part of one big river system. Today's rivers are used in many ways, ranging from recreational activities to using them for transportation, drinking water, crop irrigation. We also, like I talked about in the last slides, dam them up to form lakes to make electricity. Two videos on this one. So again, pause me, watch those two videos. As you're watching them, be jotting down your positive and negative effects that humans have on those ecosystems. Next up is our farmland and our green space. Missouri has a great agricultural tradition. We're home to nearly 95,000 farms, covering two thirds of the state's local land acreage and supporting many of the state's top agricultural commodities, including soybeans, corn, cattle, hogs, and turkeys. I also don't know if in that number, if that counts hobby farms. My guess is that's really just more commercial farms. So people who really make their living off of farming, but you, your family might have a hobby farm where you just have a few chickens and you grow some, grow some of your own vegetables and things like that. On average, Missouri farms are about 291 acres and almost all of them are family owned and operated. Our land makes it really good for our agricultural diversity. We have fertile soil, which means we have good soil with good growing conditions, and we have a lot of it across the state. In these areas where we have these farms, we're also going to find deer, coyote, field mice, birds. So we're going to find all of these animals that are benefiting from the fact that we're commercially farming. You know the drill by now. This video is actually directly from Ozark, but go on ahead, pause the video, watch the video on the Walk of Farms, which is on kind of the north side of town over near like Waterford. Watch that and then think of positive and negative ways that we can impact that ecosystem. And then finally, we need to talk about our large urban populations or our cities because they really are an ecosystem all to themselves. So an urban ecosystem includes human developed cities and how those areas impact its surrounding environment. Our urban ecosystem consists of 6 million people living in more than 960 cities and towns. Our two largest areas are Kansas City and St. Louis. They're our biggest cities. Springfield would come in third on that list. Environmentally sound urban ecosystems have efficient smog control, road infrastructures, and water supply systems. So when city planners, which is a whole job, it's actually lots of jobs, when city planners are really developing cities, they have to think about making wise choices. Just think small scale in Ozark, which we're not really an urban ecosystem. Kind of, I mean, you know, we got quite a few people, but in the city or St. Louis, but think about everything that's happened with like Riverside Bridge. So we had to close Riverside Bridge because it was located on a river that was constantly flooding and deteriorating it. When they closed it and rebuilt the bridge, they really had to keep in mind what they could do to make the least possible changes to the river, the least possible environmental changes around it, but still make a road that was safe for people to travel on. <clears throat> Urban ecosystems have government protected and maintained parks, which offers a natural environment with trees, wildlife species, and lakes. Large urban parks in Missouri include Forest Park in St. Louis. If you've ever been to the St. Louis Zoo, it's in Forest Park and Riverfront Park in Kansas City. Again, last video to watch, so go ahead and pause. Watch about the video about urban ecology. 
And while you're doing that, think of some positive and negative ways that humans can impact both of those systems. As you finish up your notes, make sure you have at least one positive and one negative way that we're making those impacts. The more you have, the better, because what's going to happen next class period is you're going to be assigned a specific ecosystem, and you're really going to have to start going in and evaluating the quality of that ecosystem within the survey. All right. Thanks, guys.